Ray Lewis from the Baltimore Ravens. What time is that game time? What time is that game time? They cannot go on them. They can't even move the ball. You know why? Because we got each other. Put the smiles on your faces. This is a 60 minute ball game. A two time defensive player of the year, seven time All Pro, two time Super Bowl champion, Pro Football Hall of Famer, and he joins us here at NFL Films. Let's go. McNair has the football, has a lot of time, throws underneath, and it's picked off. Ray Lewis has the ball. He's on the 40, 30, couldn't go all the way. 20, still on his feet. Touchdown, Ray Lewis. All right. 50 yards. You can't hurt this. I'm a machine, jerk. And look who came out of the smoke to join us right here on the set. <laughs> I got ready to run out of the smoke. I thought you was going to introduce me and put on hot in here. So <laughs> well, it's good to see you, Ray Lewis. Good, good to, to see, you, see you. Are you aware that you're technically a draft choice of Bill Belichick? Yes, yes. So me and Coach was talking. Uh, yeah. So in, in yeah. 1995, uh, when I was at Cleveland, I traded back in the first round and got a first round pick from the 49ers in 1996. Uh, when Cleveland went to Baltimore, I stayed behind. And uh, Ozzy used that pick that I, I acquired in 95 for you. And, of course, here I am. I'm competing against you for the next 17 years. And you're a big thorn in my side. So it's great to have you, Ray. Congratulations. You, Coach. Congratulations, man. Well, well, no, I, awesome. Yeah, I know you are somebody who is appreciative of the history of the game. And now you are a member of the NFL 100 all-time team. I wasn't the biggest. I wasn't the fastest. I wasn't the smartest, but in this game, I sit next to these 100 men. You deserve it. You deserve <laughs> it. You had 17 great years, yeah. and uh, I don't know, but you might have been the smartest. You might have been the smartest. Seemed like you were always two steps ahead of the play. Yeah. We were trying to run, and uh, <laughs> so you do that against a lot of other people, too, but I thought you were, Ray, you're one of the most complete players that ever played the game. Hey, Ray. Good to man. Good to see you. Stay out of our hair today. <laughs> Stay out of our backfield. 52. Red 50. 52 is the mic. You could play the run. You could play the pass. You could blitz. You had great instincts, could handle the defense. Uh, you, you knew your team well. You knew what they could do. And you certainly knew the opponents well. And, and you knew how to defend yeah. uh, what they tried to do. So. It's obvious that your preparation uh, paid off. Let me deal with the pump and go. That's why I'm sitting so high on that. But he got to play that. Remember, we're playing Brady. It's a chess match. What? 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 Yeah. What? I hated playing against you. I hated playing against you. Well, you had three playoff games against each other all in a span of four years. So you really got into it several Januaries in a row. You know, there was no love lost there either. They didn't like us. We didn't like them. No. I was very competitive on the field. Ton of respect. Yeah. But, you know, two teams trying to get to the same yeah. spot, and uh, there's only room for one. That battle for me, that battle, Coach, I'm telling you, I, I, there's a couple of things I'll buckle up for one more time. I'll buckle up for that battle <laughs> one more time. I think one of the untold stories of your defense was the level of understanding to begin with, mm -hmm. but communication between you and Ed Reed. That mm -hmm. relationship went way beyond, mm -hmm. right, just two teammates. This category six. They ain't never seen this now. Your time the game, they ain't never saw nothing like this now. When I say, Ed, get over to the house Friday night, I need you to see exactly the way I see it. Game film on DVD. This is my edge on people. That's studying. That's why I used to bring all them guys. Come to the house, come to the house. And that's what being Ed, when we really started sitting down with that clicker, Ed game went to a whole nother level. Hey, you get an under route, bang his ass. Front side bang, back side stay high. Hey, but alert your back swinging now. One last one with me and Ed, i never forget it. Oh my gosh, we're playing San Diego and Antonio Gates, same shake route. Twelve. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna tell you right now, I told Brady, I told Brady, if you throw that Y shape on Ray Lewis, I'm going to cut you. And Brady said, you know what? If I throw that, that Y hook route on Ray Lewis, you deserve to cut me. 
because you picked that song. You, you Every, picked that off for, I don't know how many times. I, I don't know how it, many. It, like, it I'm my, sick of seeing it. <laughs> it was my one route. It was my one route. And every time, Coach, I would say, ooh, tight end, oh, ooh, they, it's, it's coming. It's coming. And I say, Ed, look, they know I'm finna jump it. So I'm gonna jump it. And he's gonna jump the second one. <laughs> and I say, I say, there's a point right before the play, I take him to the exact point. I said, don't move from this spot and you will pick this play. They ran the shake route. I jump it. Ed faded outside. He threw it. He comes a long way to make that interception. He had a good understanding for where Drew Brees wanted to go with the football, and he got there before the ball did. We're going to keep you right here, yep. Ray, not just to be part of this team, but also part of the analysis as well. Let's move to a couple right here. Tampa Bay Buccaneer Derek Brooks, an 11-time Pro Bowler who led the Bucs to their first ever Super Bowl title. He is joined by a gentleman you certainly Bill know very well and Junior Seau, a 12-time Pro Bowler and was voted to the NFL's All-Decade Team of the 90s. He is a member of the NFL 100 All-Time Team. Well, Junior Seau, in a lot of ways, uh, reminds me of Ray. He had that same kind of passion every day, every minute. Football was fun for Junior Seau. It was work, but it was fun. Stay loose. Be happy, baby. Make a wall, baby, make a wall. You know they're gonna try to run, let's go. No! No! Everybody loved Junior, and Junior loved everybody, but he worked very hard, extremely hard. Why don't you see this? The all-time leading tackler in the history of football. <laughs> Doing tackling drills. He is. <laughs> Can we break a tackle, just one? We break just one tackle? No, sir! Take it in! It reminds me a lot of you, though, Ray. When he stepped on the field, uh, he was just one of those guys that, that just had an energy and, and had a vigor for the game that was, that was truly unique and, and special. And it was contagious. It, he was a great, great teammate. And I also have to ask someone from the U about FSU's Derek Brooks. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure you've had some epic battles with Derek for many a moon. You, me and him have been friends for so long. Derek is so calmly spoken, but when he gets on the field, he's a different mentality. Sideline to sideline was what I was in awe with him about. From a weak side backer to the way Derek Brooks scans the field, some of his interceptions was on the opposite side of the hash coach, places yeah. that you don't supposed to come from if you're a weak side backer. Third and 18, and this is going to write a finish. Derek Brooks, who ran back three interceptions for touchdowns in the regular season, does it to cement the Super Bowl. That's the thing. You expect him to be out there in the left, and when you throw the ball, he ends up right in the middle of the field. And he does that better than anyone. He's out there by the numbers, and then he squeezes in, and that's where he gets his interception. Those two players for me has a huge impact on the way I played the game. The monster of the Midway's own third overall pick of the 65 draft. He was a member of both the 1960s and 1970s All-Decade teams. And then, of course, Buckus in the middle really was a, was a very physical linebacker. I mean, he was probably as big as the offensive lineman that he was playing against then. Played with a lot of power and uh, physicality. Was very instinctive, though. He ran well, he got to the ball, but he was a big presence in the middle and a big personality, too. Get ready for Dick Butkus, football's doomsday machine, a special kind of man who turns ball carriers into blood and flesh tackling dummies. Buckus created why you don't come in the middle of the field. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> he played the game the way a linebacker is always supposed to play the game. He's that icon that every kid needs to research. Just go back. And if you want to play the linebacker position, just go see why it was started. I think Dick Buckus is a big reason. 
linebacker Bobby Bell. 12 seasons with the Chiefs, racked up 26 career interceptions, the first Chief inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And finally, the great linebacker Willie Lanier, the player nicknamed Contact. He was inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame in 1986. Inside, Willie Lanier looked like a guard. It looked like there was no way that you could run through a hole because he was that wide to start with. And if you tried to get through there, there was just no gap in there. And I think the guy I enjoyed watching the most was Bobby Bell. Mm. I, I've seen some athletes and I've seen some long athletes and I can see guys with movement skills. But not only was he trying to make plays and he could drop into coverage and he can do all these things. But when he got there, coach, it was not a pretty sight. Those three, when you think of the Kansas City Chiefs, they were all, in their own way, freakish talents. But at the end of the day, I'll tell you Bobby Bell is something really unique. Paraphrasing their coach, Hank Stram, we now matriculate our way to the in-studio guest that's about to join oh us here. Oh, boy. The great Lawrence Taylor, LT three-time Defensive Player of the Year, two-time Super Bowl champion, and the second defensive player ever voted MVP of the entire league. Running away from Taylor. You can't run away from him. He's like one of those heat-seeking missiles. Tipped high. Intercepted by Taylor. He'll score. Oh, Lawrence, the magician. Hey, baby, let's go out there like a bunch of crazy dogs and have some fun. Wherever you run, you better block Lawrence Taylor. Don, I got to do better than this. And look who's now sitting next to Ray Lewis. How are you, LT? I'm fine. How are you? I'm great. I, this is awesome seeing the two of you guys here. Yeah. Back together. It's awesome. Yeah. Huh? yeah. <laughs> Reunited. Feels so good. Awesome. What do you think? Well, I think I had the honor of coaching the greatest defensive football player in the history of the game. And uh, he, he helped make me a great coach, I'll tell you. But, you know, we were talking earlier. One of the things I love about you two guys, both of you, is the pride you had in the front seven and stopping the run. You told the DBs, just stay back. We'll take care of the running game. Okay, just stay out of the way. Covered pat. We'll handle the running game. And that attitude is so powerful defensively to know that, like, these guys got it. I tell you what was so funny about when you said that. I remember Terry Jackson, who was the corner on my side. I was doing a lot of stuff, you know, chasing people down, making a lot of plays. And he used to always come, LT, we're going to lock this side down, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're going to we'll lock it down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Listen, I'm, I'm missing somebody that with one of the keys, but we'll lock it down anyway. <laughs> we always knew what every position was doing. You used to coach that. Bill Parcells used to stress that. We had to know what the corner doing, what the, uh, the outside backers are doing, what the, the inside backers are doing, what the nose tackle is doing. I used to always know where every man was, except for myself, because I didn't know what the hell I was doing. <laughs> Nobody knew where you were going. I was just hey, it up Ray, I I, we played against him. I'm telling you, nobody knew. And, and it was so intimidating. So we're up there drawing on the board, and everybody back in the day, they would, they would just put the running back to block the linebacker, right? It didn't matter, you know, okay, inside, out, whatever, you know, all the protection stuff. And that was out. I mean, running backs were flying into quarterbacks. We were just sitting there watching on film, and so we are like, all right, they got the eraser out, you know? Like, forget that stuff. One man cannot block Lawrence Taylor. One of the great things about, about LT is we come off on the first series, you know, we go into the game and, you know, this, we're expecting this, that, and the other thing. And then he'd come off and say, oh, I could read this every play, run past every play. I'm like, all right, well, what? Because I used to tell about a quarterback. He comes up to the line, doesn't really care. It's a run. He comes over and he's scared to death looking at me. It's a pass. <laughs> it's a pass, all right. And I'm telling you, by the middle of the first quarter, either the tackle or the quarterback, if they had to block him, they were shaken. If they didn't, they he knew good. that he knew that it was a run. <laughs> it was like with Ron Jaworski. You know, I used to. Uh, he was like one of my favorite targets, and <laughs> I um, I used to say something. I'll mouth something to him, and he'll he, and he'll be back there. He's like, what? I say, I'll tell you when I back when I come back there. I'll be back, I'll be back there in a second. Okay, I'll be back there in a second. You mind? You mind, baby? All right. 
Taylor on the blitz. He does it well. Once he gets the quarterback in his sights, he's going to get him. 1986. Mm -hmm. I just talked to him about this. I was 11 years old. And my grandfather said, I want you to watch somebody. And I'm sitting there, and this TV come <laughs> on, and this LT. There was a string of probably four, five, six plays where I didn't care about watching nobody else, but actually watching his impact on hitting other men. And I'm watching this time after time again. And now, because of I understand the science of it, I'm watching you do this and I'm like, they don't want this fight. They don't want this fight. The moment I see, and that's why, that's why I'm just, let me be a kid for a minute, okay? Y'all bear with me, just me a kid. <laughs> now, the bottom line was, I'm a kid watching this. And I'm saying, where does that come from? Mm. Where, how do you know you can just beat another man like that? And that's where I think the mentality of, 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 of the greatest of all time really starting at, I'm telling you, you don't realize the impact that you had over people. But I got that mentality from my father. Mm. Let me tell you, I got it from my father. My father used to tell me, you have to be better than the next man just to be equal. I'm proud. I'm happy, I'm content with the actions that I have on the football field. I've had three great coaches in my life, actually four. You know, Mike Bushy, my first uh, high school coach, uh, Jim Tressler, my uh, linebacker coach when I was in Carolina, Bill Parcells, one of my good friends, Bill Belichick, who's might be the best of them all. So I, I'm, I've been very fortunate to have some great coaching. And even though I may not listen in meetings, but I do listen on the game day, okay? <laughs> tell him, I'll tell say. him what you say. Try to tell us tell, tell, well, I got to hear some of these now. <laughs> we, we had our team meetings every uh, Saturday night, uh, 9 o'clock. There was no team meeting, just offense and defense. So, you know, the players would, you know, come in, mingle around, and then offense, defense, go into separate rooms and have our meetings. So I take the defense and, you know, we get about like, you know, LT's not there. We get about five, six minutes into the meeting. He walks in. So, of course, the whole team sees he's, you know, a few minutes late. So we finish the meeting. And uh, afterwards, I go over to Coach Parcells and say, well, I just want to let you know LT was, you know, a few minutes late for the meeting. Looks at me like, yeah. So, well, just thought you, you know, want to know. Well, why'd you start the meeting before he got there? <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's my boy. I can do that's it. Again. Your boy. <laughs> that's my boy. But one, one, one thing we did though is, is uh, that's fantastic. LT's rookie year. I mean, he, he, this guy could do it all. Okay. Offense, defense, special teams, wherever you wanted him to play, he would have been a great two-way player if he had played in the two-way era. We put him out as the gunner against the Eagles in the playoff, in a wild card playoff game. Wally Henry was the returner, and his thing was he wouldn't fair catch. He would not fair catch. Well, he should have. We put <laughs> LT out there, and two fumbles. That was that was a difference. I'm running game. straight at him. I'm <laughs> running straight at him, and and I'm saying this son better put his hands up. <laughs> I hit him right here. Ball goes everywhere. Mistake and judgment should have signaled for a fair catch. Did you see he came down there and he came under control and waited for Henry to drop the ball. 18 years since the playoffs. And now they advance because of Lawrence Taylor. The single greatest story I've ever heard when you were late to the Monday night game and you had to go up and 
tell Coach Parcells why it was that you were late and you came out of the locker room and into the first corner or something? I'm hoping, I'm not sure if it was time you talked about it. When I, I, came. Just say, I just say it had a little bit to do. Can I tell the story? Yeah, yeah, please tell it. God, that's, damn, please. <laughs> Hell, so it comes I back. Remember. So I said, why were you late to the game? I was just trying to figure out, you know, why he's late for the game. And he said, man, the foursome in front of me was playing so slow. <laughs> and I was like, what? Oh, I said, man. you're playing golf? And he goes, yeah, and the foursome in front of me was playing so slow, I couldn't get there on time. And I said, well, what did you tell Parcells when you got to the stadium and you came out on the field in your uniform and everything? He said, Coach, the foursome in front of me was playing so <laughs> slow. I said, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. There's no way. Bill Sims looked over at me saying, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Give me the bus story, man, about the bus. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Bill Parcells is the type of coach, you know, he, 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 you know, sometimes, you know, I might been out a little late, so I would, <laughs> he had to check on me, make sure I'm on the bus. So we was on the bus one time, and, and Bill was going through his, 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 he's going through his roll call. He just looked at his paper, he said, LT, you here? I said, yeah, coach, I'm here, I'm here. He said, bus driver, let's go. We got enough to win. Right. <laughs> In the 1950s All-Decade team, in terms of Joe Schmidt, a seventh round pick of the Lions who played in Detroit for 13 seasons and led the team to two NFL championships. We finish up your film session with a couple of linebackers, starting with Joe Schmidt, coach. Joe Schmidt, uh, you know, had an immediate impact in the league. Very instinctive player. Joe ran well uh, and just really had a knack for the ball. This is a Joe Schmidt play right here uh, where he, he kind of recognizes the backfield set, uh, starts over here on the defensive left side, hops over to the right side, uh, and, and anticipates the play, you know, makes a tackle for a loss. Good all-around football player that just continued to make big plays on a very good defense. You can really see Joe's range on this where he, you know, to the outside, Handling this wide route, going out there, making a solid tackle. And last but not least, I'm really looking forward to your film session on this guy. One of the great two-way players of all times, Concrete Charlie, Chuck Bednarik, who was a World War II veteran, played 14 seasons in the National Football League, starring at linebacker and center. He led the Eagles to two NFL titles. So this is Ben Eric down at the bottom of the screen here against the Browns. That's uh, Jim Brown at fullback. Bobby Mitchell uh, is, that, is 49 and a half back. And Ben Eric did a lot of this and uh, as a linebacker, again, instinctive to recognize plays quickly. Didn't always make the tackle. A lot of times he'd do things like this, take a blocker or two out, uh, clean things up and you know, strip the blockers so that somebody else, or in this case, he came back and, and made the play. Just had a nose for the ball. Made a lot of plays. It's going to be close. He's not going to get oh, in. Oh, he doesn't get in. But there's going to be a collision here. He's not going out of bounds. That's you know that. <laughs> Rich, he's not running out of bounds. That's right. Did we'll you see know, who gets up slow. Did you know these guys because of your dad, or was this your passion? How, how did you know these guys? Uh, well, I knew most of them from football cards. Really? So, I would, yeah, that's, you know, I have all, most of the cards from, you know, late 50s, 58, uh, you know, the mid-60s. And so if they were on a football card, I knew them. Do you still have and, them? And knew them well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, my mom didn't throw them out. So they're, they're in a box. Bill Belichick's football cards are somewhere in a box. They sure are. The mad stork, Ted Hendricks, another guy from the U, is in this mix here, Ray. Six foot seven, 220 pounds. Hendricks played in 215 straight regular season games, a member of the 75th anniversary team, and he won a Super Bowl title with the Raiders. Linebacker Jack Ham is in this mix. Jack was a second round pick out of Penn State in 1971, and he played 12 seasons in the Steel City, named to the NFL's 75th anniversary team. And then last but certainly not least, one of the most intimidating players in the NFL 100 all-time team, linebacker Jack Lambert. A second round pick out of Kent State, Lambert played 11 seasons with the Steelers. He was a member of the NFL's all-decade teams of the 70s and 80s and was the 1976 Defensive Player of the Year. Double wing right, ace! Uh, 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 cool your ass off.
I mentioned those two guys, those two teammates of yours, Joe, you think what? Special, special memories. Jack was quick, fast, very bright. Ham was just a special player, very good athlete. Outstanding in pass coverage. Lambert, we call him Jack Splat. <laughs> Jack Splat. <laughs> he helped bring the personality. And Jack's power, not only in the running game in the middle, on the inside, his ability to cover, he could get very deep. He had a little trouble playing at Kent State. You know, he played behind Bob Bender, and yeah. uh, they played him at defensive end, they played him outside linebacker. Bender was the inside linebacker, and prior to the, uh, I think the 73 season, when the Rolling Stones came to play in Cleveland Municipal Stadium, the Kent State football team handled the security for the stadium. At the, end of the, at the end of the concert, uh, things got a little, you know, hectic there around the stage and fans kind of started moving in and, and Bender grabbed Mick Jagger, threw him over his shoulder and took him off the stage and got him to the limo. Jagger's like, hey, you know, I, I need a security guy like you. What are you doing? So he didn't go back to school that year and Lambert became the middle linebacker. <laughs> Bob Bender went on to be a, a security man for uh, the Rolling Stones and, and other groups. He's a short, stocky, thick guy, you know, bench press like 650 <laughs> pounds. Oh, gee, but, Coach. Yeah. You never shared you know, this with me. Is this, is this news to you? Yes. Yes. The famed Stones curtain <laughs> dropped down. That is great. That is so great.